I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed, but Beyonce's been catching heat with everything she does lately. Four years ago, you couldn't say anything about the star. She was at her peak. Now, not so much. And Beyonce is wearing this gigantic diamond. That's a blood diamond. And that it was found in a mine where African laborers were forced to work in horrendous conditions for minimal pay, and many of them died. That's supposed to inspire women, but a scathing report, it says that multi-millionaire mogul singer Beyonce has contracts with overseas clothing companies. They use sweatshop labor. Now some Beyonce baby drama in Manhattan today. Allegations that star treatment is preventing other families from seeing their newborns. He says hospital security kept putting the hallway on lockdown to accommodate Beyonce's visitors. He says the hospital even kicked his family out of the waiting area. You're just going to take over the hospital like you own it. One man we spoke with said if this is true, the hospital went too far. If you're having a baby, it's a special time. It's a time for the family to enjoy being with their loved one, making sure their baby is okay. My great great grandchildren already rich. That's a lot of brown turn on your Forbes list. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me here, Comrade Lavender, and I'm here with an anti capitalism true crime deep dive YouTube video today. I'm going to be doing the topic of pure evil, the Beyonce files, deep dive, everything wrong with capitalism. Let's get started into this topic. But before we get started, all my YouTube videos that I've made that are related to this topic will be linked down in the description down below of this video, along with on the screen right now if you'd like to check them out. So let's get started into this YouTube video topic. Beyonce has always been a opportunist catless pig vulture. I never honestly understood and I never got the hype about her and her music and honestly the stan fan mentality is toxic as fuck. Stan culture in general is seriously toxic. Beyonce's gone around trying to be like this pro pan Africanism pro pan Africanism icon. I honestly feel like she's a total opportunist and she only cares about the capitalism profits at the end of the day. At the 2016 Super Bowl 50 halftime show, the singer performed in an outfit that paid homage to the 1960s Black Panther Party attire and she has been quoted saying, Malcolm X quotes, The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. We first heard Beyonce use as Malcolm X quote in Lemonade, she made sure that the same quote was blasted through this festival speakers for everyone to hear. But the reality is, is that Beyonce is an opportunist vulture who is no different from the rest of the catless pigs. Beyonce can use black and African culture as an aesthetic when it's beneficial to her career, but is quiet when it comes to addressing actual political issues directly affecting black people. Beyonce has faced backlash for not speaking out about the situations impacting different black communities, specifically what's been happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Haiti within the tri-gay region of Ethiopia, as well as in Sudan. Not only that, but recently Beyonce, along with a slew of other rich celebrities, such as Taylor Swift, have been criticized for not speaking out about what's happening with the Israel-Palestine and Gaza situation, because Israel is committing a holocaust against Palestine. Israel is a fascist police state that is murdering Palestinian children and murdering journalists on a daily basis, with many blaming the star for allowing her film to be screened in Israel amidst the current genocide going on in Gaza. Beyonce's Black King is vi Beyonce's Black is King visual album. The project has received criticism for its monolithic portrayal of Africa in light of the recent global revival of the Black Lives Matter movement. Nevertheless, and despite features from notable African artists. Some Africans are unoppressed by the American singer's efforts viewing her depiction of the continent as mere as more imagery and Wawanka esque than based on the real and rich continental diversity and history that Africa holds. On that exact very topic, Beyonce had been labeled as an opportunist by an African woman who was not impressed with the singer's recent collaboration with African artists. Taking to Twitter to share her displeasure, 
Beehives need to relax through their demigod Beyonce is simply an opportunist using African culture and writing on the global positive rave of Afrobeat to gain attention and sell records. No, she's not giving African artists the global stage. They already had the global stage. She was quoted in saying on Twitter, The yellow Tiffany diamond is one of the largest yellow diamonds ever unearthed on this earth and has been and become a huge fashion symbol since its first discovery in 1878 discovery in South Africa rooted in deep imperialist and colonization history Beyonce became the fourth woman and first black woman in history to wear the yellow diamond which caused some fans to address the colonial history connected to the rare gemstone Tiffany and Co shared that Beyonce and Jay-Z would star in its latest campaign, Celebrating Modern Love. Images from the campaign announcement have Beyonce in breakfast at Tiffany's inspired dress, wearing the Tiffany diamond. The outrage comes because Beyonce is one of the biggest black music artists in the world and had just recently come off her Blackest King musical film and visual album, which was all about celebrating people in Africa culture to have spent so much time on a project like that just to make money yet wearing a symbol of imperialism British imperialism reads as Beyonce only using Africa as a prop and detached from the history. The Tiffany Yellow Diamond was discovered at the Kimberley Mine in South Africa in 1878 at the time, British forces launched battles of conquest and colonization conquest and harsh discriminatory racist practices against African tribes and laborers in South Africa's conflict-ridden mining industry paved the way for the apartheid. Predominantly black miners were subjected to horrific capitalism atrocities and conditions and sometimes received no pay for their work at all and treated like a slave, but are responsible for discovering the diamond that is one of the most exclusive and most expensive diamonds in the world. Beyonce's Lemonade album is a capitalist money-making at its best. From slavery to present, black female bodies have been bought and sold. What makes this commodification different in Lemonade is its intent. The purpose is to seduce viewers who like to suggest Lemonade was created solely or primarily for black female audiences are missing the point. Commodities, irrespective of their subject matter, are made, produced, and marketed to entice any and all customers. Beyonce's audience is the world, and the world of business and money making has no color. The Carters and Beyonce have been a menace. We're just glad more people are waking up and peeping their faves as instrumental in maintaining the probability of anti-black colonial violence. Beyonce has been accused throughout the years of whitewashing and other colorism controversies when it comes to it. I honestly don't know if it's just me, but I feel like she's gotten lighter over the years. Beyonce's platinum resistance look got some side eyes. The superstar nearly broke the internet when the images emerged of the singer in a silver gown with platinum blonde hair and what many perceived to be a lighter skin tone, and appearances may have been enhanced by the lighting used at the event. This look didn't go over well with her audience, fans, and the black community. The criticism largely appearing in posts on Instagram ranged from people accusing Beyonce of bleaching her skin to others assuming she chose pale makeup and lighting to look like a white woman. Someone asked, where did her millennium, millennium go? One user wrote on Instagram under a post by popular gossip account The Shade Room on Instagram, The origin of colorism are rooted in the system of white supremacy that has equated lighter skin tones with more privilege. During slavery, white slave owners often showed favoritism to enslaved Africans with lighter skin tones by forcing them to work inside the house instead of toiling in the hot fields. In many cases, lighter skinned slaves were the product of sexual violence by white men against enslaved black women. Over time, this hierarchy of skin tone created divisions among black people, and the internalized discrimination has left a deep psychological and emotional scars that have lasted for generations. Beyonce has also been accused of allowing others, such as the beauty makeup brand L'Oreal, to alter her natural beauty as well. When she appeared in a L'Oreal ad campaign in 2008, her skin appeared to be noticeably lightened, per The Guardian. However, the brand declined and said that they did not lighten her skin tone. Another thing 
thing that is known with Beyonce is she releases all this music and songs about being an independent woman and how women should be independent and woman empowerment like her song Single Ladies or her clothing line Empowering Women but she's not independent at all and she's also not empowering women that are you know wage slaves for capitalism Beyonce's woman empowerment clothing line, Ivy Park, is paying sweatshop workers, wage slaves, victims of capitalism, workers, 54 cents an hour. Sources say Beyonce's Ivy Park apparel line is still abusing factory workers in Sri Lanka. Beyonce's clothing line, Ivy Park, is supposed to be all about women's empowerment and feminism, you know, and this girl boss feminism female empowerment movement, but it looks like Ivy Park is abusing female workers half a world away. Additionally, it also appears that the brand is unwilling to make adjustments or changes to its labor abuse practices going on there. Despite mounting accusations, most of the workers in the sweatshop facilities are women, according to the company that makes Beyonce's female-focused mission statements seem pretty hollow and two-faced. Beyonce was quoted in saying, my goal with Ivy Park is to push the boundaries with athletic wear and to support and inspire women who understand that beauty is more than your physical appearance, Beyonce said last year. True beauty is in the health of our minds, hearts, and bodies, but yet she is hurting p victims of capitalism's minds, hearts, and bodies, you know, with putting profits on lives. Beyonce was also quoted in saying, My great-great-grandchildren are already rich. That's a lot of brown children on your Forbes list. Black capitalism will never save us. You know, these capitalist pigs are not people we need to be looking up to or whatever. There's no such thing as an ethical capitalism billionaire. Billionaires and millionaires shouldn't exist at all. And they're not self-made. Beyonce's praise of Jay-Z in a resurfaced Twitter clip has Twitter up in arms, stemming from a resurfaced clip of a 2006 birthday toast from Beyonce to Jay-Z. This is nothing compared to what you've done for me. Not only me, but everybody here. You taught me how to be a woman. She was quoted in saying in the video clip, Rightfully, people criticized Beyonce for saying that Jay-Z taught her how to be a woman. Why did your man teach you instead of your own mother? Also, allegedly, Jay-Z groomed Beyonce, so it's very problematic, honestly, in a really problematic situation. She was 19, and he was 31 or something when they were dating, allegedly. More hypocrisy of the Lemonade album that Beyonce made. How did it come to this? Scrolling through your call list, I don't want to lose my pride, but I'm gonna fuck me up a bitch. Know that I kept it sexy. You know I kept it fun. There's something that I'm missing. Maybe my head for one. Her lyrics go, a woman blaming another woman for a husband's infidelity? Really? Hasn't the world evolved enough for these people to realize that the problems inside a relationship dictate the problems on the outside? Is the third party to blame or is it the husband, the man who took vows to the woman to be blamed. Now for all of the world and people who praise her bravery, but it would be a whole lot braver if she actually did any of those things she claimed she would do in her actual life. You know that, sh you know that saying? It's just words. In other words, the more you talk about it, the slimmer the chances of you actually doing it are. Here's another lyric that she's done. Middle fingers up. Put them hands up high, wave it in his face, tell him boy bye. I ain't thinking about you, her lyrics go. So we can all conclude that this album was just a capitalist publicity stunt for people to listen to her songs more and buy the album for the buzz and the hype to build around her and Jay-Z's image some more. She's still with them. But don't be deceived by the apparent tolerance of Western ways. Muslim traditions mixed with capitalism on steroids, like child camel jockeys and overcrowded inhumane labor camps like this one. Sex outside marriage, holding hands, even kissing someone on the cheek can be enough to have you arrested. Because fall foul of Sharia law and you're in a whole world of trouble. Just like Australian Alicia Ghali, jailed because she was raped. Beyonce slammed for putting capitals and profits over lives. You can't just be in lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer plus, ally for profits. Cap Beyonce is slammed for 
dedicating record-breaking Grammy win to the queer community after her $24 million performance in Anti-Gay Dubai. Dubai is a known country that's extremely pro-capitalism that is known for being built with immigrant slavery. The skyscrapers that were built there were built on immigrants that, you know, were basically in slavery. They were literally slaves. Women have been arrested for being raped in Dubai, in that country, and much more awful, you know, capitalism atrocities going on in that country. The singer's gig in Dubai, where same-sex acts are considered a criminal offense, potentially punishable by death, shows how money can crush morals. Dante's formation exploits New Orleans trauma. Formation, which invokes both Katrina and the Black Lives Matter movement, Beyonce attempts to publicize black tragedy and black death by using them as props for popular consumption. That is an act of advocacy. The system failed New Orleans. The U.S. fascist police state government and the head of state left them die. The incompetence of the local leaders, the breakdown in communication of authorities, the lawlessness of police officers and troops. I could speak about the victims of racist vigilantes who hunted evacuees down like dogs for trying to secure safe ground for themselves and their families. While some are made giddy by the metaphor of Beyonce's body being submerged by the water, victims are remembering images of bloated dead bodies of grandmothers, grandfathers, cousins, uncles, great aunts, nieces, etc. that drifted through the floodwaters like discarded pieces of scrap wood. They're all images that ran across the victims of this traumatizing, tra traumatizing event, televised screen on repeat in the weeks and months after the levees broke. These were the horrifying tales relayed by survivors of the storm. From an outsider's perspective, it would seem as if Beyonce, by returning to the devastation of Katrina, is centering New Orleans, but she is not. She is rather exacerbating a trauma. Beyonce, in 2016, she shouted out the name of Bill Gates in the song Formation. The man is problematic for many reasons. Not only is he a vile, evil, money-hungry, capitalist pig, he believes in the overpopulation racist myth. Bill Gates has, not, has been a great advocate to push birth control programs in Africa in order to reduce its population. He embodies and represents the neo-colonial disdain of members of the white elite towards people from the southern sphere. Yet Beyonce finds in Gates a hero for being simply wealthy, powerful, and white. Jay-Z and Beyonce released a 2015 song, Drunk in Love. In his rap verse, Jay-Z Jay says, Eat that cake, Anna May, while boasting about his ego and wealth, capitalism, obsessions. This verse is rather shocking as it refers to the Tina Turner movie, What's Love Gotta Do With It, released in 1993 where Angela Bassett beautifully portrays Tina Turner. In the scene, Lawrence Fishbourne, who plays Ike Turner, beats up and forces Tina Turner to eat some cake. The fact that Jay-Z used this verse in a rant is not so shocking, coming from the shallow catless pig he is. However, Beyonce accepted it, sang it, and had no issue mocking a battered woman whose career she stole in every way. Beyonce made fun of a scene of violence where a black woman was punched and treated like an animal, thus showing, like Tina Turner herself, her total disdain towards the community and black pain in general. Beyonce using ableist slurs in her song. Beyonce announced she would update the song Heated Off Resistance. The line spazzing on the ass, spaz on the ass, will get replaced by blasting on the ass, blast it on the ass. Disability advocates critique the use of the word spaz as a derogatory ableist slur and term against those with spazistic depalgia, a common form of cerebral palsy. Now on to Beyonce hospitals and American capitalism health care. The Beyonce treatment at hospitals, no mother should be forced to give birth in conditions Beyonce wouldn't accept for herself. Beyonce announced her first pregnancy live at the 2011 MTV Video Music Awards. At that moment, Twitter experienced an unprecedented spike, over 8,800 tweets per second, the most activity ever recorded. In an instant, Beyonce became the most famous fetus in the world. It's a small wonder that Beyonce's baby took her first breath of life in a birthing suite entirely unlike those available to the rest of the community. That's because the family shilled out 
the capitalism cash for a VIP, very important person, labor experience at the New York City's Lenox Hill Hospital, where for $2,000 a day, you can deliver your little one in a bubble thoroughly insulated from the usual dangers of American childbirth. For those with the means and the money, seeking high-priced alternative care is a rational response to the state of maternal well-being in the United States. Between 1990 and 2015, while, while maternal morality rates dropped in most of the world, pregnancy-related complications and death rates for American mothers rose by more than 50%. By 2013, Maternal morality was more prevalent in the United States than in Iran, Romania, or Vietnam. Almost a thousand American mothers die from pregnancy-related complication causes each year, and 65,000 more come close to death. A recent study by the Centers of Disease Control found that almost 60% of those incidents are entirely avoidable and preventable, the result of inadequate medical care and systematic racism. Many black women and die in hospitals because they're not believed when they say there's something wrong with them. Beyonce Delivery would suffer from no such negligence. The New York Daily News compared Lonox Hill's executive delivery suite, freshly renovated in anticipation of the Beyonce visit, to the top dollar accommodations at five-star luxury hotels. They reportedly include multiple bedrooms, a kitchenette, four televisions, a sweeping view of the Tony Upper East Side of New York, cozy mahogany walls, colorful abstract paintings, even formica top coffee tables topped with crystal candy bowls. Beyonce reported feeling a very strong connection with her daughter during her labor. It was the best day of my life, she said, and told the Daily Mail. Such a worry-free birth is a blessing and a privilege in New York City, where black women experience life-threatening complications at the rate of 387 per 10,000, roughly comparable to complication rates in Sterla Leone. According to a 2018 New York Times editorial, later, Lenox Hill came under scrutiny special treatment of rich celebrity couple, the hospital administration admitted that Beyonce and her family did receive a standard of medical care normally unavailable to other expected mothers, but they insisted that the treatment wasn't special, it was just expensive, but it's clear that Beyonce's family was a beneficiary of an outrageous fact. Safe and comfortable medical care is available to catless pigs who can afford it, but denied to those who are poor and can't afford it. Capitalism kills, as usual. Capitalism is misery. Having earned a reputation as a palace that birthed blue ivy, the hospital had no trouble attracting rich mothers as well. New York City hospitals have been closing at an alarming rate, leaving many without a reliable place to seek urgent care or give birth. About 20 of the city's hospitals have closed their doors since 2000, including 16 public hospitals that disproportionately affected and served working class patients. In New York City and across the country, high quality medical care is becoming harder to come by for expectant mothers and their children. Not for Beyonce, though, in 2014, when she was expecting twins to deliver at Hollywood Cedar Cincinnati Hospital, there the deluxe maternity suite package, $3,600 to $5,100 a night, can get you a hairstylist, a personal doula, manicures, pedicures, two big screen televisions, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a full bathtub, and a refrigerator stocked with chilled juices and healthy juices. Can we imagine providing this level of luxury to every expectant mother? Beyonce Tiger Controversy World Animal Protection Charity disgusted as pop star uses endangered animal as a plaything. Cabos pigs are known to treat animals like props. Don't believe me? Look at the Gucci Tiger ad campaign. They're treating tigers like props. 
and she and Beyonce has been slammed by wildlife charity after sharing snaps with her in Blue Ivy, her daughter, petting a tiger cub. Many tourists unwittingly contribute to the suffering of wild animals like this. They're simply not aware that their once-in-a-lifetime photo shoot with the tiger cub means a lifetime of capitalism and misery for the animal. She went on to explain the tigers used for these kinds of phot photographs are often crammed and the tiny cages are chained to the floor for long periods of time and they suffer. Dr. Schmidt Birchin said they also forcibly removed from their mothers so they can be fed artificially by tourists. Other controversies Singer has done, Beyonce. The singer has angered animal rights vegan groups with her use of fur. Beyonce is just your typical catless pig using animal fur for fashion. In 2013, Beyonce and her hubby Jay-Z announced that they were experimenting with a plant-based diet per the Telegraph. Subsequently, they commemorated their newfound dietary choice with a trip to a vegan restaurant, except Beyonce's choice of attire was most upcoming of a fur baby friendly establishment. The singer caused a stir when she wore a huge fox fur collar and leather pants to the restaurant. It's safe to say that vegan patrons probably had plant-based beef with Beyonce with the good fur. An outcry ensued with Salon arguing maybe we should just call the duo what they are, two celebrities on a fad diet. The fur coats and fur in general can be thousands of dollars because they are designer fashion choices. These animals had to die for that fur just to become fashion. They are victims of capitalism. There were capitalist pigs boasting about having no sympathy for the animals when it comes to the fur industry and making profits off these animals and not caring about the lives of the animals. Beyonce has also engaged in problematic do toxic diet culture advice. A controversy that has long plagued Queen Beyonce is her apparent avertation of bo body positivity. In 2006, she promoted a liquid diet, later warning fans not to emulate her, but Beyonce couldn't quite stop herself from going after these toxic fad diets. In 2019, she announced that she followed a Margro Borges 22 day plan, a highly restrictive plant based diet in preparation for Coachella per Harper's Bazaar. As Beyonce previously explained in her homecoming documentary, the diet entailed no bread, no carbs, no sugar, no dairy, no meat, no fish, no alcohol, and I'm hungry. But nutritionists were not on board with Beyonce's plan. Charletta Sterling Reed told Harper's Bazaar that she was disappointed by the singer's promotion of the rigid diet, which eliminates most major food groups. She was branded Beyonce irresponsible for suggesting that it is okay to purposely make yourself hungry. Meanwhile, nutritionist Danielle O. Shog Nessie told the BBC that Beyonce's endorsement of the diet culture was harmful for teenage girls. As E.T. noted, in 2014, she had allegedly photoshopped a thigh gap into numerous photos and made her waist and legs thinner. And in 2019, she came under fire again for seemingly continuing to photoshop her figure. Her so-called photoshop expert told Radar that one of her snaps was so heavily manipulated that it might not even be a photograph at this point. Then in 2021, fans criticized Beyonce for supposedly manipulating another snap after noticing that the stairs in the background were visibly warped. Some, however, highlighted that this could have been the product of lighting and the angles opposed to extreme editing pre the mirror. Vogue argued that Beyonce was contributing to an un- attainable ideal through her apparent trans tendency to photoshop her photos. If the world's best bodies by profession don't feel comfortable with theirs, already beyond moral forms, how are the rest of us supposed to grapple with our self-perceived flaws? Long story short, the stan culture is toxic and honestly nobody should be worshipping millionaires or billionaires at the end of the day. They're not self-made, we need to eat the rich.